today we're going to do part two of help me decide between my Smith & Wesson model 6944 Magnum and my Glock 19X 9mm. So what I'm going to do is I had a lot of responses from the previous video, a lot of questions, different comments. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to address a couple of the more interesting ones and then I'll tally up the responses and decide. So, uh, starting with some of the questions, let's read some of them. Alright, so getting into the comments, uh, to, first I'd like to respond to Mr. Black Cat Outdoors and say, I'm sorry, but you're just not my type. Um, I hope we can still be friends, but I just don't see it going any further than that. Alright, so then to respond to, uh, there was a lot of people mentioning five shots not being enough for self-defense. Now, uh, statistics on uh, citizen self-defense shootings, all that, um, usually just the act of having a gun is way more than the average person has when it comes to self-defense. Most citizens involved shootings do end in less than five shots if you go look at some of the FBI statistics. So I never really considered myself limited by only carrying five rounds. But at the same time, I was, I, you know, of course aware of the fact that, hey, five rounds is not, is not 10 rounds, is not 15, is not, in this case, 17 plus one. Um, so I knew that, you know, even though I, I felt I had an adequate ability to de defend myself, I certainly was not overachieving in capacity. So I wanted to address that because I know a bunch of people had said that it wasn't enough. And if you go read some of the statistics out there, uh, it was, in fact, adequate, just not, I guess, excessive. But moving on, so uh, some of the people were talking about uh, reliability. Now, reliability of both of these guns has pretty much been perfect. Uh, this, and I'm going to do a full review of this in a little while, um, has not jammed yet. About 800 rounds through it, 1,000 rounds through it, has not jammed yet. This, the only time it jammed was some of my reloads I was firing out of it. Uh, the crimp on the bullet wasn't that good and it jammed up the revolver. So yes, it was a jam, but I only run factory ammo through this when I carry it. So that really isn't much of a possibility. So reliability wise, I would consider them both perfectly reliable. All right, so moving on. Um, bunch of people had uh, shown that they, they, like me, are not the biggest fans of Glock. Uh, OBNXX, OBNXS1 asked if there was a choice besides Glock. Um, I'm kind of trying to, trying to try new stuff, and a lot of people said I should try at least one Glock, so I'm, I'm kind of doing that with this. Um, for anybody that's watched the channel, you know that uh, going back, I, I usually switch EDC every year or so, you know, and when I say that, I mean I switch primary EDC, like, you know, there's guns that I started carrying almost 10 years ago that I still will on occasion carry, but I generally switch every year or so my primary EDC with something new, uh, just to get a new feel for it and experience different stuff. So this, you know, like I said, this time I wanna to switch to a Glock, try new things, try a polymer frame gun, um, so, to answer all those questions about is there a better choice in Glock, probably yes, but I want to give it a shot and I seem to shoot it well enough. Which, the other thing people were asking about which I shoot better, um, it is taking me a little bit to get used to the Glock trigger, but overall I shoot both of these about the same when it comes to uh, accuracy. Now obviously for rate of fire, the Glock wins out hand down, hands down, because, you, you know, as I stated, you only got five shots with this. And there's a good bit more recoil when it comes to firing this, even though I'm using a light wad cutter load as carry. There is still more recoil than with a 9mm. So that covers that. A um, bunch of different random questions. A lot of people weighed in on this, and it was really cool to see a lot of my uh, subscribers and viewers and stuff like that give their thoughts on it. It made this decision... Uh, pretty easy. Um, certain people, a couple people brought up carrying 44 Special in this. There's a reason why I don't carry 44 Special and I don't recommend carrying 44 Special. Not that it's bad or doesn't work, but most 44 Special 
shares the same ballistics as 45 ACP. Um, nothing wrong with 45 ACP. I carry 45 ACP, but is as technology moves forward and we come up with more tech, you know, more bullet designs and are able to achieve um, more with less. You know, case in point, the HST, which perform very well in this little 124 grain package. Um, I don't consider 45 ACP to be especially potent as a round. It's it's a good all-round caliber. Um, I actually kind of agree with the Yankee Marshall on this, where he says there's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't excel in any one field. So the reason that I say that is because ballistic-wise, 44 Special and 45 ACP share a lot of characteristics with each other. Um, I would not want to limit myself to five rounds in a large frame, uh, L-frame steel gun, such as the Model 69, and only have basically five rounds of 45 ACP by carrying 44 Special, which I can get 44 Special plus P and plus P plus, which is what I practice with the gun, which is basically the same recoil as these, but again, you're kind of into the same problem of if you up the powder, you're going to up the recoil, and you basically pull yourself into the same boat. So that's why I recommend if you're going to carry something like this gun, find yourself a low recoil for four mag, something that still has decent ballistics, and carry that rather than a 44 special. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If you carry uh, something like this in 44 special, you still have an excellent round, just not anything that, in my opinion, stands out and justifies such a large carry gun. So that covers that. Um, that was pretty much a lot of what the general questions were. So as far as what you guys chose, now I put this poll up on Instagram and YouTube and GunStreamer. So sadly, and I, it pains me to say this, uh, the Glock pretty much won hands down. A lot of people said, especially with my hands getting uh, crappy, that the Glock is the better decision, having higher capacity is better, um, you know, not having such a high recoiling gun such as the Model 69, and plus the ability to have a light is nice, where that was one of the big things is, you know, the Smith, while, while the odds of needing a light are not you know, statistically, you don't need it that often. It's still nice to have. Um, so, yeah, the Glock 19X won out, hands down. Uh, you know, a lot of people mentioned being fans of revolvers, as I am, but basically saying at the end of the day, having 17 plus 1 of 9mm HST Federal is better than having 5 of 44 mag the uh, 200 grain hard cast wad cutter so that's the gun that won um like i said a little disappointed because i do in fact like my uh smith and wesson but while i'm disappointed i certainly agree that it's more practical um you know like i said for all the reasons i was talking about earlier so with that that's going to be my new primary carry i will still carry the smith and wesson on occasion because you know, there is nothing wrong with it and I have done quite a lot of work to it to make it uh, a really nice carry gun but what I'll be carrying this in now I've got a couple different holsters on the way and that's a long story that I'll get into once I get some of the holsters and do reviews but what I'm primarily going to be carrying this in for now is this this is a DeSantis tack light holster uh, nice belt holster has a nice can all that and there will be a review coming out on this in a little bit but basically it's the it's the light bearing version of what I was carrying my 69 in for summer carry now I am gonna try and if I carry this throughout the winter if I can grin and bear to deal with a, a block I mean block uh, throughout the winter I will try and get a shoulder rig for it which here's my other question for anybody that might know um, does anybody without having to go to like a full total custom holster maker and pay like four hundred dollars for a holster does anybody offer a shoulder rig option for 
a Glock 19 with a light on it because I know that there's a lot of really nice shoulder rigs out there and I usually go um, with Galco or a couple other brands for my shoulder rigs but as far as I know Galco does not offer uh, their, any of their shoulder rigs with a light on them so that if anybody knows of a holster maker they can make me a, a shoulder rig for a 19 with uh, with a light please let me know but so that's that's what won the contest uh, I'd like to thank everybody for putting their input lots of good lots of good points for Meg lots of um, well like I said in the case of black cat lots of interesting proposition propositions but um yeah that that's what won and once again thanks everybody for participating if you have any other questions about anything feel free to ask them and have a good day